if you are hmm. strong at this it doesn't matter whatever programming yep. language tools or yep. framework that you use you've worked with i don't know we can maybe say even like you've met at least a thousand programmers you've worked with over a thousand programmer ya uh, mungkin um, common mistakes apa ya yang panorman <coughs> lihat yang sering dilakukan oleh junior programmer yang mungkin bisa menghambat karir mereka ke depan the biggest issue that i see is that Uh, they tend to value more or really focusing on mastering products and tools and language. Mm-hmm. Gitu. Jadi, they're really in love and attached to the programming language, to the framework, to the mm-hmm. libraries. And then they can really do a lot of tricks with those. But when they have to like drop all those, exposed to a whole new different language framework mm-hmm. and tools and try to solve problems they're kind of like uh you know cannot mm-hmm. really adapt gitu mm-hmm. so i think that is the biggest issues with more junior programmers and even some senior programmers have yeah. that issues gitu jadi uh, i think the mindset yang uh, uh, developers or programmers should really have is that they are actually a problem solver Gitu. Hmm. They are going to solve problems, gitu. and hmm. they going to solve the problems using algorithms, gitu kan? Hmm. And then they need to define the algorithms. Once they figure out the kind of algorithms that they are going to implement, hmm. then they use programming language untuk express that algorithm supaya dimengerti oleh computers. And hmm. then they use libraries and tools and framework. To make them productive, so they don't need to write everything on their own. They just use existing libraries and frameworks. Gitu. Mm. So, so that is the mindset. And then, whatever programming language, whatever uh, tools, whatever uh, framework, it doesn't really matter. Gitu. Best language, best framework, best tools for certain jobs. Gitu. Jadi, mm. yeah, let's say that there is a reason why the data science guys use Python and R. Gitu. Yep. There is a reason. Uh, you know, uh, for really um, like parallel programming, people use functional programming. Misalnya. Jadi, uh, we really need to have that view. Jadi, bukannya bahwa I'm a Golang guy, gitu kan. Mm. Atau I'm a Swift guy. Terus, uh, jadi, uh, it will not help you in your career and uh, really grow your logic, your algorithmic thinking, your problem solving skill, if you really focusing on a particular programming language or mm-hmm. set of tools or framework gitu. Karena gini, programming language, tools, framework itu come and go. They are yeah. transient. Mm-hmm. Gitu. Yeah. They are transient. While concepts like uh, algorithms, uh, uh, object orientation and example, Terus design patterns, architecture, ini lebih long term and lebih fundamental. So if you are mm-hmm. strong at this, it doesn't matter whatever programming yep. language tools or yep. framework that you use. Um, you know, I get countless questions kayak every week. Kayak contohnya, kak, bahasa pemrograman pertama apa yang harus saya pelajari? Dan kadang tuh orang tuh bisa sampai spend like weeks gitu untuk finding that one programming language to learn. Tapi I always tell them, kayak, you know, you know what, I mean, Most likely kamu ini akan terekspos dengan beberapa programming language anyways. Yang kamu harus bisa framework ini, bisa framework itu. So might as well just pick one and then just start learning kan. Learning the basic logic, the fundamentals. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Ya kan, algorithm data structure. Maybe uh, one tip to be efficient adalah mungkin you can look at job ads gitu, dari company hmm. yang you you really want to join. Misalnya you want to join unicorn the Indo, or you want to join Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, and so forth. So let's say if you want to join Microsoft or Google and the like, you, can, uh, you really need to go to C++ mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. Terus, uh, yeah, if, if you're, uh, let's say, in some unicorn in some other company, just lihat aja gitu di job ads-nya. Usually, mereka cari programmer apa sih. You can do that small research maybe in a mm-hmm. day or two, and then uh, you can do a tabular which programming language is more popular now. And mm-hmm. you can just start and master those. So chances are, when you really master those, you can join those companies that you want to join like easier, gitu kan? Karena yep, yep, the programming yep. language that you are familiar with is 
what they actually use gitu. Yeah, Jadi yeah. that that can really help you. But then again ya balik lagi ke yang tadi mindsetnya bahwa um, ya udah master one and then open mind to learn the others gitu. You know talking to you seem to know a lot about yang tadi yang tadi Pak Norman bilang kan. Pak Norman tahu you know the difference between declarative function functional imperative you know all this kind of stuff. Like is it safe to say that itulah kenapa Pak Norman bisa di posisi CTO hari ini? Mm, it was very important gitu. Uh, but then again all these technical capabilities mm-hmm. all this uh engineering programming know-how skill set and experience is just like a passing grade uh mm. to to be in the next ladder gitu. Yeah. Uh, there are certain skill set that you need to master as well mm-hmm. gitu ya. So after you are very solid in the technical skills programming language tools and framework also the fundamentals like uh, logic problem solving algorithmic thinking design patterns architecture and all those you really need to master those and then mm-hmm. you need to really sharpen your communication skills gitu karena skills. chances mm-hmm. are you will work with a team there are peers there are superiors there are staff of you mm-hmm. that you need to communicate to so you need to have a good communication skill where you can articulate your thinking your thoughts gitu uh, you can differentiate when you talk to a peer technical person mm-hmm. and when you talk to business people that don't understand technical at all gitu jadi you need to have that capabilities gitu yeah that includes let's say presentation skills or public speaking skills karena you will present your ideas to your team you will present to management to get their buy in support investment and so forth gitu jadi kayak begitu and then after that um, of course leadership gitu jadi uh, it's not about management atau jadi leading of people tapi it's about uh, driving change gitu how you step up you see something uh, good you have a vision and then where you are today and you really want to go there and you mm-hmm. really do action and taking steps to go there and that may inspire others to follow you gitu ya. Jadi uh, you can really drive that change that is leadership gitu. Mm-hmm. And then after that uh, w- when you move up uh, you know maybe you can become a dev lead you can become an architect gitu ya. principal engineers vp manager engineering vp engineering and even uh, truly cto Uh, you need to also uh, have uh, the so-called business acumen gitu. Jadi mm-hmm. you need to understand the business aspect. Jadi uh, with all the code you write, with all the system that you build, what does it mean for the business? How those can really support the business goals? How business goals, you can look at it and derive that and make technology strategy and so forth. So there are different layers that you need to master. And again, technical part is just like the fundamental base part you are so good at that but you miss all those that i said above that um, you will be there forever